Hi, this is Kevin Baumer, CML Deputy Director, and welcome to the February 1st, 2019 edition of the CML Statehouse Report. Things are in full swing down at the Statehouse, but before we talk about legislation, just a reminder that CML's legislative workshop will be held on Valentine's Day, February 14th. We're very pleased to announce that Governor Jared Polis will be doing uh, the introduction, uh, introductory remarks at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, really pleased that the governor is able to join us, and we do have a surprise uh, that will be welcoming folks to the uh, workshop before that. So hurry and sign up. Space is limited and registration closes on February 7th. Now to legislation. Uh, uh, just generally I want to talk about sales tax because uh, that is a topic that we will see attention at the State House on. There is obviously Senate Bill 6, which is a RFP requirement for the Department of Revenue, now the, uh, uh, now the Office of Innovation and Technology. Uh, in the state um, to, to run the, uh, the RFP process. We're supporting that legislation. That will move forward, and you can read about that in the Statehouse report. But on the bigger issue, we're starting to hear um, more about interest in doing a de minimis uh, for uh, uh, allowing businesses to be exempt from uh, sales tax remittance uh, if they don't have a certain, go over a certain threshold of uh, overall sales. That would obviously only be for the state uh, collected entities not impacting home rural municipalities. And we may meet, see some other legislation addressing Wayfair soon, uh, but uh, so far nothing that anyone shared a draft with us first. Stay tuned for sales tax stuff. That is obviously a uh, big ticket item we're gonna pay a lot of attention to. Um, up this week on, uh, uh, this coming week on Tuesday, February 5th is House Bill 1018. This is one that's been hanging around for a little bit that would end the uh, eliminate the ability of local governments to opt out of the state unclaimed property act and have a local program uh, the title is very restrictive on this bill so there's not much that the sponsor can do with it that would allow the league to withdraw our opposition and indeed uh, an amendment that we believe will be proposed uh, would uh, would would still um, uh, eliminate the program at some point in the future and, and mandate that local governments do something that is technically very difficult to do now. We've tried to work with the sponsor on on this and unfortunately I don't think we're going to get to yes and uh, we'll be asking for a no vote on that bill. But related to the Unclaimed Property Act and probably a, a bigger issue is Senate Bill 88 which is a uniform law that comes out of the uh, Uniform Law Commission and uh, that would completely repeal and reenact the entire Unclaimed Property Act. Uh, why is the Municipal League interested in that? Because it eliminates, by the repealing and reenacting, that local government opt-out. Uh, we're working with the sponsor, Senator Bob Gardner uh, from Colorado Springs, uh, on retaining that local government opt-out language and, and uh, believe we'll be successful on that, but we're not quite there yet. So I did want to make folks aware of that. On Wednesday, February 6th, um, a bill that the League opposes uh, that would change the manner in which local, um, um, which library uh, uh, district um, trustees are selected. Right now that is done cooperatively between the local government entities that create the library district. This would this bill would force it to uh, an election requirement uh, and that is something that the League and the Library Association opposes uh, and that is House Bill 1048 in transportation and local government on Wednesday. Uh, and looking uh, ahead uh, and I've written about this in the State House report you can uh, uh, read the read the uh, description, but uh, Senate Bill 103, which has nearly half of the legislature on the bill as uh, con uh, sponsors or co-sponsors, uh, is uh, uh, titled "Legalizing Minors Businesses." This goes back to um, uh, uh, an issue that came up last year in Denver, in which uh, uh, minors uh, were selling lemonade and told by the city that they didn't have the proper permits. Uh, long story short, Denver modified its ordinance. Uh, surgically and specifically as local governments are able to do to uh, fix that issue. So why is there Senate Bill 103? Because this has turned into more of a national campaign about allowing minors to be entrepreneurs and seeks to address the issue with a very broad swipe at, uh, at local licensing uh, authority of businesses uh, uh, completely. And so uh, the League is opposed to the bill. Uh, we're uh, obviously aware of the fact that half of the legislature is is on the bill, so we're going to try and work with them to uh, have a more surgical approach as uh, as Denver did when it modified its ordinance. That Senate Bill 103, it'll be heard on Monday, February 11th uh, by the Senate Business, Labor, and Technology Committee. 
And uh, last but not least, a bill I've talked about that has been uh, delayed until February 13th now, and this is House Bill 1087, dealing with uh, public notices posted on uh, local government's websites. Right now there's an open meetings requirement uh, that uh, deals with posted notices uh, and some entities also post on their website but there's really no language in the open meetings law about that. Uh, House Bill 1087 as introduced would actually mandate that every local government in addition to the existing requirements post a meeting schedule on a website and uh, in the manner that the uh, bill prescribes. We actually don't have an issue with that as long as it's not mandatory. And why? Because many of our members don't even have a website uh, or don't regularly publish stuff. We agree that if there's publishing going to be done online of a, of a meeting that uh, there ought to be standards and are working with the sponsors, Representative Matt Soper and Representative Chris Hansen, on, on language that uh, makes that optional but sets a standard for online publication. And that again is House Bill 1087. It will be heard now on Wednesday, February 13th in the House Transportation and Local Government Committee. Hi, this is Megan Dollar, Legislative and Policy Advocate with the Colorado Municipal League. This week I want to talk about two bills that CML worked on that were heard in committee. The first one is Senate Bill 30. What Senate Bill 30 did uh, as introduced was allow an individual that pled guilty to a deferred judgment um, go back within any amount of time and uh, ask or petition the court to vacate that judgment. Uh, what the bill was trying to get to was uh, those that experience immigration consequences as a result of pleading guilty to deferred judgments. Though those, uh, those, though deferred judgment cases are usually um, dismissed, as it turns out, those guilty pleas do remain on an individual's record. CML worked with Senator Julie Gonzalez to amend the bill uh, so that it was narrowed to only apply to cases where uh, an individual could experience or was experiencing immigration pro uh, consequences as a result of that guilty plea. Um, the amendment also created a hearing procedure. Originally in the bill, uh, someone could petition the court to get that guilty plea vacated and there was not a procedure. This one actually allows the court to actually have a hearing and uh, requires that individual to uh, meet a certain threshold. Uh, with the adoption of that amendment, and it was adopted in committee, CML is now neutral on the legislation. The other piece of legislation I would like to talk about is Senate Bill 40. This is a bill that CML supports, uh, and it was brought forth by the Colorado Department of Public Safety. What the bill does is create the Colorado Fire Commission within the Department of Public Safety. Uh, what the com uh, commission will be tasked to do is be a consolidated um, a group that determines statewide coordination and cooperation for fire preparedness, um, fire suppression, and whatever the whatever is necessary to meet the needs of the state. CML testified in support of the legislation yesterday due to the importance of the legislation and in addition there are two municipal representatives on the commission. Hi, my name is Brandy DeLang. I'm a legislative and policy advocate here at the Colorado Municipal League. I have two bills to go over with you today. The first bill is an update, which is House Bill 1086. Um, thank you for everybody who did their outreach and contacted their representatives on the Business and Labor Affairs Committee. Um, based off of the outreach that you guys did, we were able to get House Bill 1086 laid over. Um, and now we are working with bill proponents and sponsors again to find a, a compromise and a solution um, in regards to this issue. Uh, we will keep you updated as soon as we figure out what that, uh, what that path forward looks like or if that path forward can be found. Um, and in the meantime, if you do continue to have um, concerns or if there's some sort of data that you would like to share with us, please do feel free to reach out to me, shoot me an email, send me a call, um, whatever works best for you. The second bill I want to cover today is Senate Bill 107. This bill um, is our broadband easement bill that uh, the policy committee and board have given staff discretion to support. What this bill will do uh, will allow for folks that are uh, currently leasing out fiber from um, utility pr providers to uh, access easements and allow for that commercial activity and therefore provide the broadband that is so necessary in so many portions of our state. Um, I want to let folks know that 
as it's currently introduced, um, it's more or less what the sponsor would like to refer to as a working draft. She's already begun to hold stakeholder meetings to address uh, issues and concerns associated with the bill, including things like um, whether or not uh, we're accessing only above uh, an overhead infrastructure or if we're allowed to access underground infrastructure, um, and other issues like what is the definition of an easement mean and um, how that actually applies to us. So uh, we will continue to have conversations with the bill sponsor and be really actively involved in uh, how the bill is uh, amended and changed as we go throughout the process. I do want to let folks know that it has been introduced to um, two separate committees within the Senate, uh, the Senate Business and Labor Affairs Committee as well as Senate Local Government. So as soon as we know when that um, bill will be actually heard in committee, we'll let you know. Also, uh, please feel free to reach out to me and let me know if you have specific comments or concerns related to the bill. We'll make sure to get that um, uh, over to the bill sponsor that sh so she can address it and, and work with us on it. Hello, this is Morgan Cullen and another week down at the Colorado State Legislature. Uh, just a couple of two bills that were introduced uh, earlier this week that I want to update you on because uh, they all have municipal they both have a municipal impact uh, the first is House Bill 1143 this is the plastic uh, straws bill upon request uh, and it basically requires uh, restaurant owners um, to uh, to not allow uh, or prohibit the distribution of uh, single-use plastic straws unless a customer actually uh, requests one um, problem with the bill though is that uh, there's a number of exemptions uh, uh, within the bill. Um, plastic straw uh, dispensers um, are uh, exempted. Also if you're going through the fast food line uh, those are exempted uh, which wouldn't be that big of a deal except for there is a local government preemption that precludes uh, local governments from enacting more stringent ordinances on plastic straws. Uh, so uh, for that reason, CML is going to be opposed unless amended to that uh, for that legislation. Uh, the second is House Bill 1157. Uh, and this was also introduced earlier this week. Uh, and this would um, expand uh, the use of the spe uh, specific ownership tax. That's the tax uh, that is put in place uh, in lieu of a property tax on motor vehicles. Um, the money is collected by the county uh, and then distributed uh, to uh, political subdivisions, uh, municipalities, and, and also school districts within, uh, within the county. Um, they want to expand the use of the SOT um, and provide a portion uh, to the state uh, for uh, transportation uh, infrastructure funding. Uh, we're opposed to this uh, for a number of reasons. Um, although CML is fully committed to a comprehensive statewide uh, solution for transportation infrastructure funding in the state of Colorado, um, the use of the SOT tax has us worried. Traditionally, this has been uh, exclusively a local tax, and we'd like to keep it that way. Uh, and then we're also worried about expanding uh, a present tax um, for state use um, uh, because uh, we we're worried that it's going to raise the profile uh, of the tax uh, and put a big fat bullseye on it. Um, and this tax is uh, very important uh, to uh, funding uh, vital programs uh, at the local level throughout Colorado. Again, thanks for joining us this week. We look forward to those of you who are able to join us at the legislative workshop. And as always, you can reach out to us by email or by phone. The contact information is available on our legislative page at www.cml.org. Thanks and have a great week.